Hello, it looks like we are live. Do like and it is 8 pm on Wednesday, the 21st of February. This is the Outside Bride Ask an Expert with myself, Alan Braithwaite, and Emily. Um, as always, we are just going to wait a couple of minutes while we can finish setting up here, see if anyone's coming online. I think Emily is... Uh, uh, Emily's what? You were going to do some hellos. Oh, just to say a big hello. Oh, someone's on that issue, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah just to say a big hello to all of our new members. We've had a quite an influx of people. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us in the group. We're quite a nice place to be, I think. Do you think we're yeah. all right? Yeah, we're all right. Um, we are your one-stop shop for advice and support in, special, in, in planning your special day. So um, we are a bit of a twosome. We come, come together for these kind of things, but we are also approachable individually on the group. So if you have direct questions for us, please feel free to either pitch them to me or to Alan. I quite like it because most people usually just ask Emily, so I actually get the easy ride here. But I am more than happy to answer questions, and I like to fly the grooms a flag. So, uh, yes. And I also would like to apologise because Alan has kind of let us down this week. Oh, have I? Oh, here we go. Let's have, why have I let, oh, right, with no shirt. Just a pain well, I don't yeah. have an endless supply of shirts. Now, if I'm honest, I meant to treat myself to a new shirt, especially for tonight. Um, but I didn't. But I did put on, um, are we going with plum coloured? No, it's pink. No, that's not pink. Where did you go to school? That's not pink in anyone's world. It's pink. It's not pink. It's That's pink. pink over there. Sorry, I'm pointing at Lily Rose's lunchbox. We're we're in the kitchen, which is the hub of the outside. Right. Um, I might expert. do a poll at the end of this as to who thinks Alan should carry on with the dodgy shirt um, situation. But we'll put a poll. Well, I do. So no, that's fine. So is there anyone on? We've got four people on. Say I've seen name. Leslie's name pop up. I've seen Kerry's Good name. Evening, oh, Gemma says it's pink. Gemma, I used Thank to like you. you. You've just gone down in my estimation. You were my favourite member of the outside bride until that point right there. Thank you. I could go and get the lunchbox and put it. Oh, it no, I'm getting it. Go on. Oh, hold on. Here we go. No, that's that's baby pink. That's the pink. That's, that's the pink. Here we go. This is the kids' Peppa Pig's Peppa Pig Play-Doh pot. That's pink. This isn't. It's That's a, pink. It's a um, oh, Kerry, dark pink. Leslie's saying hi. Uh, okay. Anyway, back to what we're here for. Yeah, we should talk about getting married. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be getting all the kids' stuff out. Um, as per always, we do have a few questions from people. Sorry, can I say, Gemma, I was only joking. You still are my favourite person <laughs> in the group. That was just a joke. <laughs> We do have questions from people this week. We've had a few emails from people, which is amazing. But as always, if you have questions in this live, feel free to pop in the box. We have a computer there with more writing written down, so hopefully we can read your comments and we'll try and get through as many. And it as we seems can. to be working this week, because last week it was a little bit um, dodge. Dodge. Dodge, dodge. dodge. Yes. So um, we we are. Right, so so <laughs> Helen asked us a couple of questions. Helen Day. Hello, Helen. We know Helen. She asked us a couple of questions last week that we didn't get because of the problems. So I asked her if we could use them this week and she said yep. yes. So Helen has asked for ideas for a Prosecco station mm -hmm. and she's asked about how to make toilets at our outdoor wedding look fab, which is a absolutely fantastic question. Can we do the start of the Prosecco station first? Yes. Because there's a few different thoughts on the toilet. Um, the Prosecco station, we, we know about this, didn't we? Because we've done a few. We've done a few. So, um, Really, it, can I just chuck a question? At, yes, you yes, can, please do. Gemma. At, at any point, yeah, feel just feel type free. it up, and we will we will try our best to answer it, um, unless it's about my clove sense or something like that. Um, anyway, prosecco stations. Um, do you want to start? And yes. So in? I actually I did one recently for my mum's sixtieth birthday, and um, they can be done really really simply. And I think the key is. Um, Get your get your prosecco, and you can look that get that in advance. You can either get it from your sort of wine merchant, or we got ours from Marks and Spencers. To be honest, we got their their six bottles um, with twenty five percent off, so we got quite a few decent bottles out of that. Yeah, yeah. But the key is to keep it simple. So we constructed a table, have a little bar area, and we got the big sign up. I've got a decent chalk. I'm getting really quite good at my calligraphy lettering these days. So I did a nice big chalkboard saying I'd Prosecco Station. Well, you you could just print it out, like yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to think um, cover all bases. And in that, we provided three or four different types of berries. We did blueberries, raspberries, strawberries. 
um, in some little bowls and little dishes. And then I had a uh, uh, carafe. I got some carafes from um, Ikea. They're really quite cheap ones, but some really nice glass ones like this big. And for one with orange juice, one with peach juice, peach? No, um, I, do you know what? Wasn't it cranberry uh, actually? No, pomegranate. 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 I knew it was something. And I had a bottle of... Uh, cassis. Cassis. Got a bottle of cassis and some elderflower cordial. Yeah. I just decanted them all and left them on the side and literally used it as a self-serve station. Got some really nice um, glasses out and stuff and some little um, glass bowls and get some nice vintage ones. Oh, well, then... sorry, have you mentioned the fruit that we're building yeah, up? Yeah, I think Oh, right. Oh, I didn't, and, um, you know, I didn't hear you say it. Blueberries, raspberries, strawberries. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, left at the self-serve station and people helped themselves to bits and pieces. And it was really good fun. It was interactive. And actually... People don't drink as much as you think, so you don't need as much. Because you're having soft stuff with your um, Prosecco, you don't seem to use as much alcohol in, in terms of your numbers, because it doesn't, mm. doesn't dilute you. Obviously, Unless it's I'm at your wedding. Unless Alan's there when it's just a straw and a bottle, so yes. that's fine. Um, but they're really simple to do, and they look really effective, and they're a bit of fun. And if you've... Um, I, do, I think they look amazing, they if do. I'm honest. With the bottles over there, so I might, don't be like that. We've added another domestic today, what, <laughs> watchers. <laughs> so uh, if it comes <laughs> out, that's, that's why. Um, um, what um, you can also do is, um, if you've got a Prosecco station, that's good for your drinkers. Sort out a, a very similar, exactly the same station for your non-drinkers, and you can do that with either um, sparkling elderflower and get your fruits and stuff that way, or you can do uh, ginger beer. It's quite good. Yeah, that you way. can have it at, like the same end of a bar. You yeah. know, prosecco one end, um, mm -hmm. non-alcoholic fizzy stuff, lemonade, whatever yeah. at the other end, um, soda water, tonic water, with the mixers in in the middle. I might uh, post a photo of my mum's sixtieth actually. Oh, really someone cool. has just without prosecco. That sounds like an awesome non-alcoholic version for non-drinkers there we go there fantastic go. Oh, we covered that good um, that's what we're, that's what we think is Helen even on tonight I don't know if no she's, she's not but that's fine we'll, I, uh, I'll tag her in it afterwards I'll put, I'll put a photo of what we did and you can see it yes um, um, Helen's um, second oh, oh snap we said at the same time Leslie sorry Gemma Leslie's now my new favourite person in the group <laughs> hi Leslie <laughs> Um, right, making toilets look fab. Right, I do know from this particular question for Helen that yeah. Helen is going to a campsite and they have a, um, a ah, static yes. toilet block. Not no, a I remember that. Roof. But whatever we're going about to say will translate to both. Yeah, so well, let's talk about a toilet block yep. and then talk into making it look pretty. Yep. Um, we mentioned this last week actually. Um, so, Gemma, your question has just popped up, which is why I stumble, but we can come back to that. Um, that's a very easy one for me to answer with my past as a marquee company. Um, right, we think when you're having an outdoor wedding with a TP marquee, something, some structure outside, that you have a working side and a non-working side, i.e. one side of the marquee will be the door and windows opening out onto your beautiful vista forest, garden, whatever you want the guests your and yourself space. to look out. Yeah, your public your space. space. Behind that goes your toilets, your generators, your catering team, and anything else that is working for you. Um, so that's how we think you would put toilets. On that, you could always put some grass matting around it if you really wanted to. There is a company who basically do pimped um, uh, posh toilets, so not there, just. There, there are a few posh toilets. Are you talking about ones that had the Audrey Hepburn? Yeah, yeah. So when it comes out, it can be glittery or it can be a shepherd's hut. And when you walk inside, there's giant black and white photos and sparkling and glitter and LED. There's and another company. So there's I, I can't remember what that. I can't. I think they're based in Basingstoke, actually. But there's another company called Sight Equip and they do national as well. But they do really, really awesome wrapped ones, and um, not the insides. But they do a shepherd's hut. A beach hut, a potting shed, yeah. and I do another one. They do like themed ones, which are really, really cool because that way you kind of just. Well, you're you making a feature you out of something. can't disguise them that you've yeah. got a big old toilet, got a toilet there sometimes, so, so they make it, make, make it fun. So they're yeah. quite worth looking at. And I'm sure there are other companies across the country that do very similar. But in terms of what goes on the inside, because what Helen was asking last week yes. was the um, prettying up of in, said toilet inside. On the really. inside. Yeah, she asked about paper towels versus towels. Yeah and other things. So. One thing I would say, and now just remember the type of wedding you're going for is an outdoor rustic festival maybe. That, in Britain. In Britain. 
you're not going to a, a five star hotel where you expect to have white linen and, and properly pressed towels and stuff. So if you don't put towels into your toilets, people aren't really going to care. I wouldn't go to a wedding personally and go, oh my goodness, I've got paper towels to dry my hands with. I, I would say, but if you want to do it, there are some really easy and um, quick ways to make toilets look pretty. One of them being putting like a, a box of um, pamper and pamper stuff. stuff. And we've done that with the belt, um, baby bell tents. We put um, bell tents up for pampering purposes next to toilet blocks sometimes. And in that, and it doesn't matter if you do it in the toilet or in the tent or wherever you go, um, your deodorants, your, you know, your hairsprays, your um, nail, nail varnish, your ladders and your tights, that kind of stuff. Just put it in a nice pretty basket at the end of the toilets. Um, you can put some fresh flowers in quite easily. If you've got um, jam jars and stuff, put them into there. You can put some little tea lights, battery powered tea lights for yeah. the evening. And have you mentioned reed diffusers as well? Reed I think they're are really, one. yeah, they're really simple. Because ultimately, and they're pretty when, and they smell nice. When you go to temporary toilet. toilets, it doesn't matter how pretty yeah. up you make it, they always smell of loo blue. Yes, always, fact. always. So if you can get some really nice reed diffusers to put in there, and obviously you only need one or two per toilet block that will just transform the entire space and you won't be going yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be put my sort of honest hat on I don't think it's worth spending a fortune on your toilet block but I do understand the uh, desire to make it seem slightly nicer than just the yeah. toilet block but a few careful simple touches like um, like uh, I want to say I nearly said lay as in the Hawaiian lay but I think I mean garland yeah like a garland round a mirror something like that just to you connect it, it with and the it outdoors. depends if you're having a theme if you're having yeah. a theme wedding or you've got a particular style in mind you can tie it in I mean I know for Helen's looking at very buster key so she might with her static block might want to put some bunting out the front you yeah. might want to put some um, light festoon, festoon lights, lighting yeah. around it so it leads people to a part of it because obviously at night time it's going to be a lot darker than in the daytime and you might just need some guidance as to how people are going to get to where yeah, there definitely. are so many easy things you can do but I wouldn't worry too too much um, oh. Leslie my new favourite person in the group has said <laughs> mozzie spray if it's summer yes. and cream yes. and absolutely and that's part of that pamper box if you decide to go down that route yeah. um, you know we've seen without being too crass we've seen condoms in the pamper box with some paracetamol and everything else yeah to think you about know your guests if you're having people stay over like with, with our villages and stuff we often put in um dirolite yeah um paracetamol toothpaste, and toothpaste and an extra couple of tooth, uh, toothbrushes for after because everyone forgets a toothbrush mm. but ultimately as well going back to the whole how it looks and how it feels after a few bevies by nine o'clock when everyone's people are just using it to go to the toilet you know they're not going to be spending lots of time in it unless yeah. you're a girl girls tend to still have a chat don't they no i don't know yeah. and boys don't even make it to the toilet no. yes <laughs> so uh, as a boy i can uh, guarantee that does happen um hopefully that answers helen and anyone else thinking about it or give you some ideas can we go, go to this one first? Gemma's question? Yes. Yeah. Where's Gemma? Can we read it out? Uh, Gemma Craskell Broster, my second favourite person on the outside bride, says, Marky, where do I begin? I've got a field, I've got a date, I'm happy to organise other bits, but I don't know where to start with Marky. Do they come with chairs, tables, etc.? Right. Whereabouts are you getting married, Gemma? Or yeah, Gemma, are you able to pop up? Not that it really matters, but it's only. Yeah, it's if curious. It, yeah, if it's local to us, we could probably recommend a couple of things. Right, there's lots to bear in mind. I see Emily's mentioned Tentario do teepees. Absolutely. So do you want a teepee? Do you want a square marquee, which is called a clear span marquee? Do you want a capri marquee, which is like has the pointy bits and looks very More fancy? Like a tent. Uh, yeah, do you want a party tent, which is like a gazebo on speed? Um, or do you want more traditional marquee with poles and ropes? The sperry tents are quite nice. The sperry tents. The sperry, the, like the sailcloth material ones. Yeah. And, and the thing is, they all look fantastic. Um, if you go and get quotes from all of these people, they're all going to be different. Uh, the prices are all going to be different and everything else. So you kind of need to have a think about what you want, uh, what style of marquee you want. Um, it would be worth looking at a couple. Of, yeah, I know, Gemma, I'm sorry. It, wow options. It is yeah. really difficult. They should be able to provide you a quote for everything mm -hmm. you need. If they can't, so they should be able to provide you flooring options. Um, thoughts are a wooden floor is worth the money personally unless the marquee is going up on like that's um, a marquee not a tp oh of course you wouldn't sorry that, that's how 
complicated an answer. What well, I would say though, going forward, and again, you're. You've yeah, got I was low, entering into male you, practical <laughs> mode. Go on, Emily. You've got loads and loads of options to think about, and if you want to have a private chat with us, we can happily come and give you some sort of tips and hints to things to look at going forward. But when you're getting your quotes, and it's really important, think about your guest amounts and the size. I would say if you're going for a large scale wedding, Capri marquees aren't always the best because of the shape of them. You lose, you lose the a edge. lot of edge on site. Yeah. And same with teepees. But Emily, that is very true. Emily yeah. says the teepee isn't cheap. They that aren't cheap, true. but they are spectacular. Um, but make sure you really scrutinise your, your quotes because we've both found from our separate business, I've obviously had the bell tents, Alan's had marquees in the past, that customers have come to us in the past and tried to compare quotes together and they are two very, very different quotes hand in hand. For example, with marquees, if you've got two marquee quotes and one's £2,000 and one's £7,000, there's often a reason for that. Not necessarily because they're trying to be a cowboy, no. but for Alan's had in the past with marquees, someone's trying to compare quotes. One's got full suspended wood, wooden floor in that, which is quite, you know, not costly, I, but it's... it's well, there's it's a, a cost a, associated a with it, yeah, compared yeah. Compared to just carpet on the floor or no no uh, matter. One's comparing shivari chairs, one's doing folding chairs. So really look at the specifics. When you've got two quotes in front of you, don't just go, oh, damn it, there's five grand difference. I'm going to go with the cheapest. Honest, uh, honestly, which of the cheapest as its renewal of ours? I don't think of mine what it looks like. Look for someone doing a party tent or a Capri marquee. They will be the cheapest. Yeah. Um, and if you Google party tents or Capri marquees, in Hampshire, we, we can't recommend them because we've never used them, but we know them quite well. There's a company called Nixon's, Nixon's. Marquees. They do Capri marquees. Um, we've heard good things, but we've not directly used them. Um, but a Capri marquee can look fantastic. Um, uh, and and they get, do look fantastic. They do. They have... Um, Unless the weather's bad. Yeah. Yes. The thing with Capri marquees though, which you can sort of do in, in a nice way, is they have the big archway windows. Rather than having a big panoramic around the edge, you've got nice big archway windows and you can get some really lovely soft up lighting them in the evenings and they can look fab as well. We've been yeah. to a few weddings with Capris. But yes. yeah, if you're looking for a cost effective option, Capris will be your option over a clear span marquee with, with all the trimmings and stuff. Because yeah. you can still. Because clear span marquees and teepees are essentially temporary venues. Mm. They're like bomb proof and everything else. So if you just want a bit of shelter for uh, renewal of vows or wedding or whatever your party, then uh, definitely look at Capri marquees or party yeah. tent style marquees. Awesome. Um, Emily put ours cost over 6k Gemma went I want the cheapest and Emily put they're not TP very, very <laughs> true very true but they look amazing and that's the thing and you get what you pay for in a TP and we put a couple of pictures up on the outside bride Instagram this week and they've had load more likes than any of the other pictures just because well A there's a TP in it and B they were taken by a drone so they look amazing yeah they do our pleasure Gemma uh, Laura says we have a TP for the ceremony, a barn for the party. Emily Jane, we have booked with Tentaria and they have been amazing. Tentaria are spectacular. Yeah. Oh, I you, would, you know, but them, I, I, you know. I was, again with bell tents. We tend to go to a lot of that kind of style weddings. So we've seen a lot of bell and um, tent company, TP companies across the. The county and stuff and they are they are just yeah. spectacular but Tentari are really really yeah. good lads well. um, on last thing Gemma when you get your quotes or you start shopping around or whatever you decide to do mm. feel free to ask questions in the group and you know and I'll, I'll be happy to pop on and so yeah. will Emily we're and more we, than yeah, happy to um, answer questions we've, we've said this we're gonna start doing some tutorials and stuff throughout the next sort of weeks and months and stuff so are we, are we yes we are more domestics coming up then team <laughs> But um, we're here to help. So any questions, just fly away. Yes, right. So we are approaching 20 minutes. Yeah, Sylvie. Sylvie has asked, she, is it a good idea to do a DIY photo booth with Polaroid cameras? Right. You so had this email to you, didn't you? This was emailed to me. Everyone likes a good photo booth. Everyone can do them in their own ways. And it's quite um, simple to do. And if you've got a space and you've got your props and you've got frames and stuff, brilliant. The one thing I would always say is proceed with absolute caution when you're using Polaroid cameras for said activity. Because, again, I, I haven't been to a few weddings where it gets quite drunken, by about nine o'clock when everyone's had a couple of beers, um, that photo booth will be taken advantage of. And yeah. film is so, so costly. And it depends how you're doing, because a lot of people like to do one for them to take away, one to put in the book or the, the guest book or hang up. I, I was going to say that. It, it's almost like I, I, I'm i a bit OCD organised. And for me, my my 
my, my personal challenge with anything DIY is who's going to manage it? Yeah. You know, who's going to replace the film? Who's going to do this? Do you want a hundred pictures of cock or ball around the, <laughs> the venue? You know, um, it, and, yeah. and that's the question. Who's going to tidy up when the drunk people have thrown it five yeah. metres? You won't, if you're expecting there to be a really lovely display of photos at the end of it, be prepared there won't be. Do you know what? Perhaps we just go to weddings with these people. They are quite drunk and we go to No, I know, but perhaps it is the rest of the world. They don't get as drunk as similar. our friends. Mm. Who knows? I'm sure you all do. Um, but I say it's absolutely fun to do that and they look amazing. And who doesn't love a Polaroid picture? They but look fab. Get yourself a member of the family, mother of the bride, anyone you like, just to be kind of like caretaker of it as a section because, like I said, cameras are expensive. You don't want them to get broken. Film is expensive. They're going to need reloading every 10 seconds and everyone goes snap, 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 snap. And um, you want it to look good at the end of it. So just yes. proceed with caution. Um, last question on our list from Sylvie again. Ideas for collating photos from guests. Yeah, that was a really simple one. And I just thought I'd, I'd bring it up because it's a simple app. So Sylvie asked about wedding photos at the end. Obviously, you've got loads of guests, loads of people taking photos and you kind of want a central place for them all to go. Facebook groups are great for that if you want to do it cheap and easy because you can set up a Facebook group. Well, cheap and easy, it's free. It's free, yeah. yeah. But not everyone in your wedding party would necessarily be on Facebook. So what, Facebook, have... like the fourth largest country in the world or oh, whatever? Oh, right, great, great Auntie Flo might no, not be I on know, Facebook. I know. But there's a really cool app. Um, you've probably heard of it, so it's probably not um, anything we should about you, but there's kind of called webpick.com, webpicks.com, and mm. they are an app. You can get it on your phone. You can get everyone to get it on their phone. And then literally at the end of the event, they can all upload their photos. We have it on one central album. You can, from there as well, people can pick and choose if they want to print photos from there. They can order photos. They can share them with you. You can upload, download it. It's just a really easy way of doing it. So I would say, if you don't, if you want to do it Facebook, fantastic. But webpix.com is definitely yeah. a really simple way of doing that. Um, only because I have a background in technical stuff, so I like this. Um, there are, I mean, you could use Dropbox, you could use things like iCloud photo yeah. sharing. There are many, and whatever Google's version is called or Amazon's version is called. Ultimately, but, um, if you've got yeah. 150 guests, one of them will be stupid. Yeah, it's 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 a challenge collating everyone's photos. Mm. I remember after our wedding, but uh, we tried our best, and we just got having to send it over. So no, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, that, that's it. Unless anyone's got any pressing questions, that is all our known questions for this week. Um, and well, that's it. We, we we do actually enjoy this. We nearly forgot tonight, um, but no, we are only joking. We didn't. Um, I was merrily putting one of the kids to bed, and um, I was like, "Hurry up!" Hurry yes. up! But I was like, why am I hurrying up? Why Putting the kids to the bed, the ones that give us the the ones that give us these bags under the, our eyes. Oh, you haven't got any. No, looking fresh in the days. No, I haven't put my. Who's my derma? Derm, I've got derma Der O'Leary, O'Leary eye O'Leary. serum from Marks and Spencers, which obviously I bought into. It doesn't seem to be having much effect. Dermot. So yes. Next week. Um, bye bye from Seb. Bye, bye Seb. Seb. Um, Seb's eighteen months old. Um, we it's going to be me and someone else next week because selfishly this one i'm off to see ant middleton do a live chat if anyone knows who ant middleton is um he does some programs on channel for proper like boy zone stuff but i've been reliably informed that probably 70 percent of the audience is going to be female if they're all swooning over him yeah emily thinks it's hot anyway so it's going to be me and somebody else it might be another supplier however if i do i do know there are a few um brides that have got married already in this group so if any brides in here who have been married in the last 18 months two years so want to pop on and share a screen with me feel free because you've all got a well not Alice like what no no I'm fine with that my I've gone immediately into technical mode as in how, making sure that works What's next that week one? Leslie question for next yeah. week of course Leslie you you're my one. favorite uh, how to politely ask people not to take peer uh, pe oh let me ask it how to politely ask people not to take pics during the ceremony unplugged so yeah. people, well, yeah, you either coin the phrase unplugged or you basically ask the um, the um, uh, registrar. registrar to say, please don't do it. Again, that. there's some really nice, uh, we'll do an answer quick because we're here. Yeah. Um, there are some really cool um, little rhymes and limericks and stuff you can get. And you get. I would, I would suggest at your ceremony, just get a, a chalkboard or an A-frame or something and just really put a nice little limerick saying about it being an unplugged wedding. Yeah. Get your... Um, 
registrar to just do it at the beginning because they always do a chat yeah. about no photos blah 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 just get them to make sure that they are I think it's one of those things where people go oh blimey I can't not allow to take any photos and then sit there happily not taking any photos and so. do you know what, it's, people are getting wise to it these days it's more, more and more now that people go actually yeah. it's about us getting married I don't really want Alan having a camera in his face for like two seconds he wants to be able to see the bride walking down vice versa and mm. want to see faces and you don't need to see 50,000 smartphones getting down the aisle so it's not uncommon I wouldn't even worry about being polite I would just say it's an unplugged wedding this is the thing this is what we're saying put it on a sign people can read it and if they don't cut them from the wedding yes right thank you very much everyone we do need to wrap up now uh, this is the longest ever um, mm -hmm. So we would like to thank you all for coming online. It's been a good one this and, yeah, it's been fantastic, and that we look forward to speaking to you all again uh, next week. As always, no, you're not going to speak to no, me next I'm not week. Here next week, as always, share everything with us um, on the group. We'll happily um, comment and help wherever we can. Absolutely. Um, and because ultimately, we like weddings as much as you do. That's why we if do I this. Hope so we work in them. No, I know. We love it. You know, we love it. We absolutely love it. We do love it genuinely. Anyway, good night, everyone. Have fun. Bye. Bye. Bye.